Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. And tonight I want to approach something that a lot of people have asked me about and several have asked for a tour. Uh, and we're going to kind of go over the importance of air assist and I'm going to kind of show you the, the way that I've got my mind set up. We'll go, uh, but shop air may be something that's a little more economical for you than what you realize if you already have an air compressor. And if you don't have an air compressor but you have room for it, it might be an upgrade that you want to try to see if that's something that'll benefit you. So that's what we're gonna go through tonight. It's all about air assist, and I'm gonna share with you everything that I know. Uh, like I said, not a not an expert, guys, but I have been running multiple lasers, as you can see, and I got shop air on pretty much everything that I run. Uh, some of the newer machines, such as the P2 and the S1, those still use their own proprietary pumps, but that's just because it works, and for now, it's not worth it for me to have to set the uh, systems up for them but for your atom stacks and your longers and some of the other the eightsers uh even even the rolly of lasermatic you know this might be something you want to do the uh especially as your pump ages and it gets to the point to where you've got to replace it or uh, maybe you just want a little bit more air assist uh, but this is kind of going to be a tour of how I've got mine set up. So if you don't agree with the way I got it set up, that's fine. Do it your way. But this is the way that I've used them for a couple of years now, and it works for me. So here we go. Let's get started. All right, guys. So before we get started, I, I want to say... Keep in mind, some of these modifications, you need to kind of have an understanding of how these machines work. Uh, you're going to need such things as a power uh, tester, possibly. If you don't know the voltage of the machine that you're working on, you'll need to be able to get yourself a test meter. And I'm digging through my toolbox here, trying to go over this with you as I, as I can. Uh, so you're going to need something that looks like this. Uh, and what this does is... Uh, you can take this and even if you don't know what the output is from the machine uh, you can use one of these to figure that out and then purchase the parts accordingly uh, a lot of these machines now are going to a 24 volt output to power the air assist some occasionally will still use 12 volts so that's something that you got to know because the difference between 12 and 24 volts when you get over to the pneumatic relay side of things uh, it's a little different so i got to give you an overview of how air assist works. We're gonna go basic 101. Uh, and we're gonna start all the way from how air assist works and how it benefits you, uh, all the way to how to set this stuff up. So it may be a little bit of a lengthy video, but if you don't have a good grasp on air assist, maybe it'll help you out. So air assist basically in a nutshell is a little tiny beam of air that goes with the diode. On most diode lasers, it runs along with the machine. <clears throat> Some CO2 uh, machines have an offset air assist, which I'm not a fan of. I prefer the air to go straight with the beam, uh, and it does two things. When you're cutting, it kind of helps as debris in the cut is burned, because that's what lasers do when they cut. They're actually burning debris and causing it to basically vaporize or turn into dust and get out of the way. So as, as that debris is burned or destroyed by that laser beam, the air assist kind of moves it out of the way, exposing the next layer underneath, which allows for a lot better penetration. Without air assist, what tends to happen is the material just kind of stays where it is. And now that it's already burned, it's basically trying, it's, it's like trying to burn uh, soot out of your fireplace. It's not gonna burn because it, it's already basically give up all the energy that it can and it at this point is just inert so if it sits on top of the material it's going to take away a little bit of the power from the laser as it moves across the material but with air assist it blows it out of the way exposing the non-consumed material beneath it so it's kind of how that works so it does make cutting a lot more effective a lot cleaner and one thing that it does too is it keeps that air flowing around those cuts <clears throat> because as that material vaporizes, you have such thing as the glue in plywoods, sap in woods. Most every wood has sap in it, some more than others. But when you're burning it like that, a lot of times the sap gets vaporized. And if it's allowed to sit in one spot on the material, it can cool near the area of the cut. And when it does, it causes that yellowing or black, depending on you know what material it is, kind of a stain around the cut. 
and that's not something that you want on pieces that you're trying to cut out. You can work around it. You can sand it off of there if you, if you don't have an air assist, but it's really a matter of time saving because then you don't have to fool with that after it's over with. Callie says, hey, uh, she is wanting to try out the Roly over there, the Lasermatic, to see if it's cat safe or not, I guess. But so that's the big plus that you're going to notice with air assist is your cutting is going to be much better, much cleaner. It's going to look better. You're going to get caramelized edges as opposed to black. And we're going to do a little bit of playing with how it actually affects the cut here in just a little bit in one of my enclosures. But I want to go through all of the, the very elementary stuff, guys. And if you already know these things, I apologize. But a lot of people are just, just getting into this hobby and don't fully understand the uses. So engraving. For the most part, when a lot of people will tell you that you don't need air assist when you're engraving. It depends, okay? There are situations to where I find that I get darker, better looking burns using air assist than without air assist. Yes, too much air is not always a good thing. You gotta, it's, it's a balance. Another thing about using air assist while you engrave is one of the most critical pieces of equipment that you'll find out in a laser engraver is that little lens that's in there that protects the laser creating diodes from the elements. It's just a, basically it's a lens. Sometimes they're coated, sometimes they're not, but it's, it's basically a really small lens in there. Well, if you don't have air flowing around that lens, you can end up with a lot of that that we talked about earlier, the sap and the different things that get vaporized during the cut that turn into kind of this vapor. As it sits near that lens, it's gonna to start to solidify and it's gonna create a film on the lens. Eventually, that film is gonna to get to the point to where when that laser hits it, it's gonna actually cause little tiny chips in that lens, which is gonna cause a distortion in your laser beam, which eventually is gonna end in either total laser defocusing to where your machine's just making a black line and it's not cutting, or it's gonna crack the lens. If that lens does get cracked and you continue to run the machine, then you run the risk of that material getting up into the really important parts that aren't so easily replaced inside the uh, module. So air assist has its benefits with engraving as well. Now, you can do that two ways. You can have a two-stage system, which I have hooked up before where you're using a factory pump just to have a little bit of, uh, of, of air. And then when the laser turns light burn on, it gives it a, 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 you know, more of an air. But for the most part, if you just run air assist all the time, you may have a little bit of overburn sometimes on engraves, but most of the time, if it's wood or something like that, it's easy enough to clean off. If it's not, you just got to risk it and uh, go for it if it's something that you do not want the scorching on. But me personally, I run uh, air assist at some level regardless of what I'm doing. Now, let's get to the parts that you're going to need if you're going to do this and the parts that I use when I set mine up. And there's several things and there's several varieties, guys, of, of what you can do. All right, first of all, hose. Hose ranges from this really flexible stuff here all the way to the stiffer uh, quarter inch or so material here. And you can even get it clear and you can also get the real small hose like this. Depending on the application, where you're gonna put it, how flexible it needs to be, how much of an area you have to put it, you can go either way, okay? You can use any size hose that you want as long as you adjust the pressures to get the end result out of the nozzle. All right, so with air assists, most all air assists, and I'm digging through my box over here, most all air assists are gonna come with some type of a little cone or a lens or some type of apparatus that is gonna receive the air through a hose and it's gonna blow it out on or near where the beam exits the, uh, the machine. So, in order to attach everything, the, what, what I use is uh, the little, these are kind of like push to lock, pull to unlock type uh, connectors here. The hose basically goes in there, and here's another example of a different size hose. This is a clear hose. Uh, Niji likes to use clear hose a lot of times, but you can just snap these, basically pull this together, and these will release. And then when you get ready to put it back in there, you put it in. Now, if you release one that's been on there for a really long time, uh, it's, sometimes it's a good idea to go ahead and just snip a little bit of the hose off uh, to make sure you get a really good seal because sometimes it can crimp the hose in these connectors and over time 
uh, it'll take that shape. And if you don't get it back in there exactly right, a lot of times you can't have a little bit of a leak. But these little kits, and I'll drop the links down below for where I get my, my supplies at. <clears throat> but they come with all types of fittings. Uh, if you're running already running a shop air system, and let's say you already have a, <clears throat> uh, whether you've got like a splitter or whatever in your system, or if you're running a PVC system, and you can put a T on your PVC system, then you tap into it using one of these guys. And basically this just takes you from a standard, uh, what's the MPT uh, connector that you would find in most air situations or air setups, and it, it transfers it over to this little guy, which allows you to take uh, some of this hose. This particular one is for this uh, black hose. It allows you to take it in there and just kind of snap it together. Uh, and that's, it's, that's as easy as it gets guys uh connecting there's all matter of other connectors you can get here's one that goes like from an airline uh like you would normally use a clamp with over to uh one of the snap fittings so you can buy all matter of these connectors and but it makes it very very simple uh if you buy the kit i got a kit that i'll link down below it comes with the hose it comes with these little nifty little cutters for cutting the hose as well as a number of fittings now, once you get off of your main airline uh, and you're going into a machine, there's one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to run, let's say, 130 PSI through your laser. That's not going to work. That's too much. Uh, there's no need in running any more air assist than what you need. So the way to overcome that, guys, is you have to have a regulator. Uh, and I have found that I like these guys because they come with a regulator, they come with a cutoff valve that readily accepts the the adapter here uh, and it's all one little one little happy family here you order this uh, a lot of they come with the uh, a lot of times when you order the kit it comes with these guys you order the regulator so you get your hose you get all the fittings and everything you need you've got a close off valve you've got a regulator as well as a water separator now if you're going to be running this a lot I would strongly recommend make sure your air compressor is running proficiently and also on air compressors there is an intake filter on most every air compressor on the market make sure that thing stays clean if that gets dirty you're going to start getting a lot of humidity and a lot of moisture in your compressor and eventually it's going to end up here so if you see it start seeing high levels of water uh, in the water separator the first thing you need to check is the inlet filter on your air compressor because if that thing gets stopped up trust me it took like three lenses before I realized I had a problem, but I was seeing a lot of water and I didn't pay any attention. I kept draining it and draining it and draining it and uh, eventually it, it bit me. So if you start seeing a lot of water, check the intake on your air compressor for uh, obstructions. You can get those things on Amazon. Uh, most air compressors take the same one. And before we get through, I'm gonna give you a tour of my setup and I'll show you my little California air that I'm running and I'll show you the filters. And if you have one of those, I'll even drop the link to the filters down below in the description. I get mine on Amazon. They're like $8 a piece and they run for months if you put them in the right environment. So you'll come from your main line, uh, whether it be your compressor, straight from the compressor or a tap off of your existing line, a quick connect, whatever. You'll come into, the, in, into this regulator. Now, these things are marked. There is an in and an out. So you got in on that side and out on that side. That's important for the regulator to work properly. So you want to put the valve. I usually put mine on the out, on the out side of it, but you, technically the valve could go either side. Uh, the reason that I do that is because most of the time when I've got them turned, they're up close to the enclosure like this, and it's just easier to get to. I can't put the valve over here. It's just harder to get to. Uh, so that, I don't know that that would really make any difference which side the valve's on. Uh, it does keep the bowl under pressure when you start to drain the water. That might be the only benefit to putting it on this side is it wouldn't, it wouldn't keep as much pressure when you start to let the water out. But this is the regulator. The regulator, you pull this out. That allows you to adjust the spring inside there to get the pressure that you desire, which you don't really need this guy. You want to do it based on the cut and the cleanness of the cut. Once you find that desired pressure, you just push that in and it's locked. That way nobody can actually be sitting there just, you know, somebody just sitting there twiddling with it and misadjust your pressures. If you need to readjust it, pull that back out, make adjustments, lock it back. It's that simple. So then when you come out of this guy, 
you've got you've, you've got it regulated as far as the pressure goes you're trying to get most of the water out of there then you're going to go out into the it, toward the machine <laughs> me personally uh i like to put a water separator after this guy this is a pneumatic valve basically what this does is this takes a signal this particular one is a uh, 24 no this is a 12 volt and it takes a signal from your machine and it activates uh, the air assist. So basically electricity turns on the air. So it's still just another valve, but it's an electrically operated valve. This one's the 24 volt. I, I haven't even opened it yet. Uh, these are my spares in case I have one go down. And then I have another 12 volt here. Uh, the way that typically these things will connect to most of like Atom Stack and some of the other machines is almost all of them are gonna have either a pigtail or a cable, and it's gonna look something like this. This is standard power cable, and it's gonna plug into the back of the air pump from a relay that's provided with, you know, with the machine or whatever. Uh, or you're just gonna have an output coming from either an M8 or M7 relay. Uh, the way that I build mine, and I'm gonna show you that in a little bit, is I have these little guys. And basically, I take these different ends, and I put this plug on them, I've got the male on one side, the female on the other. And so my relays can receive whichever one of these little pigtails that I need. And uh, you can buy these little power ends online. Or if you're coming from, let's say you're coming from one of the machines that uses the split. All right. A lot of machines these days, what you'll end up with is they'll have, uh, they'll have these little splits like this. If you're not using those, you can sacrifice that and get yourself an adapter to make air assist with. Uh, but there's a lots of other alternatives. If you don't have a machine that's controlled by light burn, of course you can add switches. Uh, this is a switch that plugs in line with your air pump. A lot of the air pumps now are coming with adjustable knobs and switches on those. But in this video, I more or less want to cover the automatic air assist setups because that's what everybody keeps asking me about mine. How do you do it? Uh, all of that you can also if you're doing a low power high power you can make yourself a little t like this using one of those connectors uh, have a small pump running on low here and you can have shop air coming in from this one and when the relay cuts on it's going to run the shop air through here out uh, when the relay is off it's going to build up pressure on the back side of that 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 relay and you're just going to have this constant flow of, of lesser powered air so that's an option as well but after I put my relay in, I usually put another little water separator just to be sure because water will destroy the lens on your machine if it gets in there. There's no questions asked, it will destroy it. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to make sure of. Uh, but other things that you can do also uh, with machines, uh, and, and this, is, this is one of those situations here that you gotta have the right machine. But if you have an M7 or M8 relay, you can also purchase these little boxes like this. And what this guy here is, this is just another automation tip in case you ever want to do it. What this little guy here is, guys, is this is a DC to AC relay. So that if you want to hook your fan up that runs off of uh, AC or if you want to hook up a light or whatever, you can actually operate it from light burn using one of these little relays. And uh, I'll try to look those up for you on... Uh, Amazon and put a link down below, but these little relays are pretty handy. Uh, Niji uses a lot of them with their machines. Uh, or tour some of the older LM3 stuff. They incorporated it for the fans and the lights, uh, similar technology. It's, it's not overly complicated, but it does add a little bit of a convenience to it to where you could actually turn the fan off and on uh, from light burn. I'm not big on those. I just leave my exhaust all the time, but the air assist to me it's the way to go. You, if, if you ever go to shop air and get it dialed in right, you won't want to go back to one of those little pumps. And you can do this to most machines, like I said, but keep in mind, there's going to be some modifications to some of the intended wiring, and there may be some ramifications with warranty or whatever, if anybody ever asked about your setup. So keep that in mind. And, but this is for people like me that kind of like to tweak with the machines and don't mind uh, doing it because I'm fairly confident in my abilities with electrical stuff. So keep that in mind. If you're not comfortable doing this, I recommend you don't. So let's go uh, 
do a quick walkthrough of my setup and uh, burn some stuff. All right, guys, so one thing I will tell you, if you could figure out a way of putting your air compressor where it's not in the room with you, that's better. Even though this guy is really, really quiet, it still does make noise and it takes up room in my shop. I built it its own little porch out here outside the shack. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it stays dry, but it's, it's right here near the air conditioning unit and all this other stuff. So, uh, but that's the California air, air compressor that I'm running right now. And basically I've got a line that goes into the shop and connects to PVC and then it goes from there. All right guys, so over here at Enclosure Zilla, this is the same setup I run on other machines, but this one's a little easier to see, so we're gonna go with it. Uh, you can see I've got the, uh, this is a little hose that I've got on there for when I have to drain water, which I haven't had to use very often since I fixed my filter on the pump back there. But the airline comes in and goes to this and then turns around and goes back out uh, into the enclosure. Once it gets inside the enclosure, uh, I've got it ran across the bottom here over to the other side where most of the mechanical stuff is housed. And so we'll get you over here where you can see a little better. Uh, the hose comes up. Uh, this is the pneumatic relay that we were talking about, or valve. Uh, this one is powered off of a pigtail. Adam Stack actually has it set up to where this machine will work with their pump. And the plug that goes into the back of the pump, basically I've adapted uh, this relay to where it has a female plug, just like the ones on the back of the pump. And so I plug that wire that comes from the machine into the wire that goes to the relay, powers it. And then I've got my secondary air water separator here. And then the line goes around, goes to the machine, and there you have it. So one of the big things that I will say is instead of trying to ask people, you know, what, what PSI should I run? Because if anybody tells you that you're only going to get good results if you run 10 PSI or you're only going to get good results if you run 20 PSI, that's not true. Uh, your system, based on the diameter of the hose, the number of bends, the number of, I mean, there's a lot of variables that goes into how much pressure is at this regulator versus how much pressure comes out this nozzle. Just because the, the, the regulator says it's at 10 PSI, it is coming through that, that, that regulator. But once it gets into the system, that pressure can go up or it can go down. The best way, guys, to get your air assist to do what you want it to do is once you get it set up, put you a, a, a file in there that's going to be a you know a cut. Start off with the air with the air pressure on the regulator. Start off with the air all the way off, and you're going to see this obvious burn around the cut. As the machine progresses through the cut, slowly turn the air pressure up. Once you see that the cut is clean and it literally looks like you took a really sharp fine point pen and drew a line and there's no other indications that it was burned, that's where you want it to be. Snap the top, lock it, do a few more test runs or whatever, but that's how you wanna adjust your pressure. Don't try adjusting it using the, using the gauge. That is a, uh, th that, that would work if your setup was identical to everybody else's as far as the hose, the number of bins you had in the hose, what type of water separator you have, uh, whether or not your hose is kinked or twisted in the drag chains. I mean, there's a whole lot of variables that can go into that. So I adjust mine in the cut using the regulator. And when I get the cut to looking like I want it to look, I lock it down. Uh, but that's, that's my secret. Everybody's always asking, what's your secret for your air assist? That's the secret, guys, is out there. So... All right, guys, so I have intentionally sabotaged my air assist, but I'm gonna show you how easy it is to go back and readjust it. But in order for me to do that, I'm gonna have to get you a little closer to the laser, and I'm gonna hope that you'll be able to see this even with all the, the blue light. So if not, you'll be able to see the end results after the laser has stopped. So I'm gonna move the camera over and just, I'm gonna show you the process. I'm gonna kind of walk you through it with the audio, even if you can't see the video. All right, guys, so right there you can see, and I'm, I'm hoping you can see this, that is no air assist. All right, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to let it run this one little tab right here, and I'm going to start walking the pressures up. All right, I'm just crawling it. I'm just twisting the knob clockwise, which is going to slowly increase the pressure. See how dark the line around that cut is? 
What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it get a little more faint. Okay, right there, you're starting to see some effects from the air assist now. You see how much cleaner the cut's got. Uh, and I'm gonna, keep, I'm gonna keep going up just a little more. All right, I'm not noticing any significant difference. Uh, there is the cut, inside the cut does seem a little cleaner. So I'm gonna go a little further. So right there, I think is where I like the air assist to be. But just for giggles, man, we're gonna back it back down. I'm gonna turn the air back down, let you see what the cut looks like. That's what the air pressure turned all the way back down. See how dark the line got again. And then I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna crank it back up before we run out of uh, test material here and try to get it set back like it needs to be. All right, so there's, uh, that's about where I like it at right there. Now, on the gauge, it's not even showing any pressure right now, guys. And that's why I'm telling you, pressure is not necessarily going to be what you need to go by. But there you have it. We'll let that finish and kind of go over what it looks like. All right, I'm going to turn the machine off. Uh, the X40 is not known for being quiet. Uh, and I'm going to kind of stand behind the camera here so I can show you guys what, I'm, what, what you're looking at. All right, so right here is where we started. That was no air assist. And you can see, you can see the staining and everything. See how wide the cut looks. Uh, it's, it's, a lot of that has to do with the fact, like I said, it's not blowing that material out of the way. And then as we move over, you can start seeing a lot better cut. It's, it's clean. But then when we turned the air assist back off, we went back to this. And then I went in and I went ahead and dialed my air assist uh, back in to give me that clean cut. Now, we're gonna look at the back side. All right, you can see there is a difference even on the back side of the material. You're gonna see a difference uh, with the air assist on. Now, my honeycomb needs cleaning. So that's why I'm getting these little back flashes right here. That's, that's honeycomb back flash. Uh, it does need cleaning. And I probably was going too slow. I only ran 10 millimeters a second. All right, so I had to back it down a little bit. But you can see even after you broke the pieces out, you can still see that staining and stuff that was caused by no air assist. Uh, and if you look, we've got a nice caramelized finish. It's not black. And uh, just as a see, clean finger. All right. Everybody complains about soot in their cuts. And what do you do to clean them? All that good stuff. All right. Look at that. Very little. And that was me wiping a lot of the material. So that is another benefit is the soot doesn't just sit there and accumulate in your cuts. All right, guys, so I hope that helps you out as far as the basic understanding of how it works. My other enclosure is set up just like Enclosure Zilla. The only difference is that I'm running the longer B1, and so the adapter that I'm using to power the relay is a little bit different. Uh, now, if you do start making these cables, uh, there's several ways that you can do it. I mean, you can go as simple as just twisting the wires together uh, using a crimp style uh, connector. You can use wire splices. You, there's a hundred ways you can do it. Me personally, when I make my jumpers, I like to put some uh, heat shrink on there, uh, put the wires together how they need to be, uh, twist them up or whatever, uh, solder them, put some solder on there, slide the heat shrink down, shrink it, and then I do an outer layer of heat shrink as well just as a to precaution to hold everything together and make sure that it's really well insulated. Uh, even though, like I said, most of these are, these are gonna be DC outputs, 12 volts or 24 volts, you're not in danger of electrocution, but you could cause a problem with the machine if you allow those two wires to touch or you allow that positive wire to get to a ground. So this is one of those things, guys, if you're not comfortable doing it and if you don't wanna take a risk uh, of messing up and, and messing up your machine, don't do it, okay? This is for the folks that do like to tinker, that understand the basics of electrical uh, work and electricity. Uh, it, it is a beneficial process. It gets rid of having to have that little pump sitting around. And if you've already got an air compressor, it's more economical than buying an air assist by the time you figure up the few little parts that you gotta have. So I hope this helps for all you guys that keep asking the Sunday Night Lives and messaging me on Facebook, wanting to know about my air assist setup. I did an older video, but it was a while back and uh, wasn't that great of a video. So I thought I would redo it and try to do a little better job this time. So if you think I did a good job, good enough job, 
be sure to let me know in the comments and uh, hit that like button. If you haven't already, guys, hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to stay caught up with some of the equipment stuff. I've turned down a lot of equipment lately because I'm trying to get back to doing more in the shop. Uh, and I've got some of my own machines that I'm purchasing that's coming in that I'm going to try to quarter out a little time for. Uh, so uh, stick around and see what kind of content comes up next. But until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.